Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing breathing. Nobody's doing sounds. Sounds are simply happening. Hearing sounds are happening. The illusion is that you're hearing them. But there's someone here, sitting here on a seat. And that, that someone, that individual is hearing sounds happening. All of it is simply being, aliveness. Aliveness is happening. And in that aliveness arises the idea that there is someone. The idea, I am a person, arises. That's absolutely perfect. It's fine. It's the game. It's not right or wrong. It's what happens. And when the individual arises, ownership happens. The idea, this is happening to me. I am the one that's breathing. I am the one that's hearing the sounds. I am the individual. I am the separate individual to whom life is happening. And in order to make me feel more comfortable, I, I need to control that life. I need to find pleasure and avoid pain. That's the game. It's perfect. It's absolutely fine. It's aliveness happening. It's being, being. It's being, being a pretend person. It's oneness being two, pretending to be two. It's the game. But in that separation, there's a sense of loss. There's a sense of something that isn't whole. Often in, in being a person that isn't noticed, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of people walking around the world not necessarily feeling as though there's anything missing all the time. Many of them are enjoying themselves, many of them aren't. But underneath all of that, there's a disquiet, a sense of something missing, a hole, like there's a hole. And in order to fill that hole, people do all sorts of things, like try to become rich, or be good in relationships, or become Christians or Buddhists or become balanced people, like therapy is about becoming a very balanced sort of person who's totally accepting of everything and has worked through their block, emotional blocks and all that stuff. It's all a part of filling some sense of loss, some, some feeling, some sense that there's something that isn't quite whole, some secret hasn't been, is there but can't be, Seen. And so we fill ourselves with these things and one, of the, and one of the things we do with this hole is to try and fill it with something called enlightenment. People hear about something called enlightenment or liberation and they go, uh, they hear about somebody who teaches enlightenment so they think, feel, this is another way I can, maybe this is the way that I can feel whole because this sounds like the ultimate whole filling activity. And so go to teachers and all through our lives we've always believed as individuals that, the, that effort brings results. So personal in, we live in a world of personal endeavour and we live in a world of, of anticipation. It's always going to be better tomorrow. And we go to people, uh, teachers, and most teachers, most apparent teachers and so-called masters teach us as individuals that in order for that, uh, for wholeness to arrive or uh, enlightenment to arrive, we need to become something, like become very still or uh, drop the ego or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a long, it's usually quite a long list of things. Meditate, all those things. And again, what's happening is that somewhere the sense of the person is being reinforced all the time. Always it's about me. Everything is about me. I have to become rich. I have to be good at my job. I have to be a good lover. I have to become enlightened. In, in a sense, right from the first moment of separation, that first I thought, which arises at a very young age, then from that moment onwards, seeking begins. From the moment of separation from the whole, there is a seeker. There is no one that doesn't seek all the time that there's a person. So seeking happens. 
And also at that moment, the I thought arises, the dreamer is created and built up through life. We become the dreamer in the dream called I am a person in the world. There is a world out there and I'm a person in it who has to negotiate with the world. So the function of that apparent person is to dream, only to dream. It's the dreamer. And we dream that we can become enlightened too. I, I, if I go to this master or that master, I can become an enlightened person. It's another part of the dream. Awakening is the realization that there is no one. Awakening is awakening from the dream that there is someone. When the dream, the idea of there being someone drops away, when the seeker is no more, that which is sought becomes apparent. It doesn't come down from anywhere, it's all there is. What we seek is all there is. Everything, what we seek is, is what is everything. What we seek is aliveness, what I call radical aliveness, which is aliveness without there being anybody in it that's alive. It's just aliveness. It's like you're sitting on a seat, breathing is happening, sitting on a seat is happening, hearing this voice is happening, hearing sounds is happening. This is aliveness, this is being. It never came and it never went away. There's always been aliveness. And you could get up and run out of this room as quickly as you could to get away from aliveness and it would still be aliveness. You could resist everything and people do resist what's being suggested here. And resisting aliveness is also aliveness. Avoiding aliveness, avoiding being this is also being this. There's nothing which is not oneness, which is not aliveness. And in some way or other, the dreamer thinks they have to find aliveness, they have to find being, they have to find oneness or enlightenment. So they spend their time looking for enlightenment. That is also aliveness. There's nothing right or wrong with it. It's absolutely what it is. And then people hear, or come to realise, that what they're looking for, they can't find. There's a realisation with some people that they can't find what they're looking for and they don't even need to find it. And there's a dropping away of the idea that I am a separate person. And there is that which is sought. And that which is sought is being what is, this but breathing, sitting on a chair, being what is, liveness, being this. Absolutely simple and very, very ordinary. It's not about big events and becoming a great this or the other. It's simply about the absolute ordinariness of sitting on a chair. Then the miracle is that when you're sitting on a chair, you're still doing something in it. You're still looking, there's still a looking for something. You're not really sitting on the chair, you're waiting for the next moment. The miracle is when you are not, there is just sitting on a chair. And then wonder arises, childlike wonder of this. This is what we long for, the childlike wonder of this. The perfect lover, we meet the perfect lover who never left us, never left us and never will leave us, the constant lover pure, timeless being. And then the game, what happens, instead of being a search for something, becomes a celebration. Awakening is simply the celebration of aliveness. So we can talk together about this. It, we can never describe liberation. We can never describe the wonder of this. But we can talk together and the words point to something that's beyond the words. In a sense, here it's possible to come to see that this is it. Not that at the end of this talk, uh, you know, it's going to happen sort of this evening or next week. 
even halfway through, you know, if he answers the right question or if I get the right answer, then that'll be, that isn't it, this is it, this is it. It never was not it. So already you've got it. You can all go now. I'm going, I'll go up the pub and get have a beer. Already this is it. You don't need anyone to teach you. You don't need a teacher. I, how can I teach you to breathe or sit on a chair? Why would anybody have the arrogance to teach you to be when there is only being? It's utterly simple, directly this. All the teachers are doing is teaching you to become something. All teaching is about becoming something, becoming still, becoming whatever. And always you're going to become it. You never are it, but you're always you're going to become it. If you try a bit harder, you'll get there. That's crap. It's just crap. You are there. You are this. This is it. This is the beginning of the end. But this is also the end of the beginning. Hope is, the, is, is one of the most powerful ways to avoid awakening. Hope, seeking. Seeking is the most effective way to not awaken. And longing. A longing. Well, longing, uh, uh, longing in a sense is something that's very alive. It's, it's, it's something in the body that's felt. And uh, the trouble is with longing, or no, the trouble with the mind is that the mind turns longing into a search from a subject to a not foreign object. But if, if you just, well, you can't stay with longing. But if there's just a staying with longing, it's just very alive. It's like anything else, like it's, it's, it's a feeling in the body, longing. It's good. <coughs> it's not good, it's longing. <laughs> How can you be sure that this is all there is? <laughs> how, how can you be sure? I can't be sure that this is all there is. This is all there is. <laughs> there is no one that can be sure, but there's no one here. I am all that is, and this is all that is. I don't know that. No, no, of course you don't. <laughs> you don't know it because you are a person trying to find out that this is all there is. Yeah. You, won't know it, you won't know it until there's no one looking. Then it will be known. So then all I can say is that I, I don't know anything. No, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> That sounds all right, but I have a feeling you think you do. <laughs> I, I think of, I do, but no one believes me. <laughs> you sound like a politician now. Yes, uh, evolution is simply part of the dream. The idea of karma, good and evil, evolution, change, uh, change anything like that, is just a dream. It's not. It's, it's not. It's both real and unreal. It has no significance at all. So, in order to come out of the dream, 
I have to do nothing. No, no, because if you think you have to do nothing, then there's someone doing nothing. All you end up with is someone doing nothing that has no relevance to awakening at all. Because what you are is someone very busily doing nothing. So what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you what you could do. You could start a club. There's a guy over there. <laughs> You could call it the I'm fucking pissed off club. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just let loose. Now, who is going to hang loose? Who is going to relax and not do it. People say, oh, so I'll just go on living my life. No, you bloody well won't. You've never lived your life. Like, living your life will go on happening, but it won't be you doing it. So I'm lost. Um, well, you could, yes. <laughs> as long as that's not doing something, yes. Of course you're lost, because you've lost paradise. Or believe you have. Let me tell you, this is it. And that hopelessness is also, is still hope, of course. That's yeah, hopelessness, hopelessness, yeah. The movement of hope yeah. continues yeah. in that so-called hopelessness. Yeah, yeah. So when you would say, I almost expected you to, that you did that, give up hope. Yeah, no, you can't, no, that's the same thing. Giving up hope is being hopeful. It is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll give up hope. I, yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you hear me, God? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what is the difference if you are in pain, if you are being crucified? And now, I'm not going to say crucifixion isn't in anymore now. <laughs> it's too old fashioned. <laughs> The difference is that it's very simple. Pain arises, uh, pain arises, or someone believes they are a person who has pain. Is there any advantage in none at all? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is that all the time that you think you own pain, then you're then there's obviously some sort of sense of it happening to someone. This is the imprisonment. This is the difference is between imprisonment and freedom. One is boundless, the other one is bound. That's all. And as long as you believe that it's happening to you, then there's nothing you can do about it. No, there obviously isn't, no. Because you are the dreamer of the idea of imprisonment. The dream of there being a separate individual is the dream of imprisonment. And the teaching that you can get out of that is also the teaching of imprisonment. Because the teaching that there's something that you can do about becoming enlightened or free imprisons you in the idea that there is someone called you. So it further imprisons you. So could you make this, then I can make the final statement and say, okay, I'm not free, I'm finished. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, really. You can say what you like. It's, uh, the oneness has no interest in that story. Oneness is that story, but it has no interest in ending or not ending that story. So there's no agenda. Then it's all about being aware of oneness. But who is going to be aware of oneness? No one, but as long as you experience oneness. No one has ever experienced oneness. All the time there is someone, there is someone looking for oneness. Yeah, then, then it's the separation, and then there's also no way to get out of it once that no. is going on. I know how what is being in oneness is the most easy thing. But once you're out of it, there's no way you can get back to it because... No. It just happens. 
I mean, the other thing is, there's no hurry. Because of death, there is only one. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. You've only got a few more years to live. <laughs> <coughs> buy, you know, don't come. It's buy your, spend your money on a new car. And enjoy that, you know. And then when you die, there'll only be one. Miss. The only problem is you can't do anything about looking for one. All the time, there's a longing for it. You're, you, you know, your head's in, in the tiger's mouth now, so you're going to go on looking. Yeah, that's the problem. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on looking, although I found it already many times. Well, you have never found one, and nobody ever has, but oneness has a wisdom. And then you come back and think you found it. And that you can have it and keep it. Like you have everything else, like pain and money and lovers and all that. It's the one thing you can't have because it's everywhere. It's the one thing you can't lose because it's everywhere. It's the one thing you can't attain. Because Aren't you it's in the there. process of looking for it and nothing or no one can help you, right? Absolutely. I'm not helping you, I'm not interested in helping you because I, I don't see anyone there to help. But anyway, I can't help you. How can I help you? You are already that. There is only that. And then I keep depending on, uh, on people who are all the time minus <coughs> to go back to oneness. That's, in fact, the only thing. Yeah. That's good for you. It's not good or bad, it is what it is. Some years, some years ago, I was in a, a state of consciousness that uh, everything I was was broken down, totally broken down. It was terrifying. I was in sheer terror. Mm. Uh, it felt it was pitch black darkness. Um, and I said, of my um, attitude was, okay. I'm nothing anymore. I'm nothing anymore as a person. But I don't want to have to let destroy myself. So I kept as a lifeline. I'm a divine spark, and I go on with nothing. Afterwards, I wondered if I what should happen if I have had uh, let go of that lifeline. It felt as if I should be become insane then. Mm. But I wonder what would happen. I always, I survived. It, it really felt as a surviving. But what would have happened if I had let go if that, maybe it was a concept too. Yeah. And no one knows. And no one knows. Because everything that has happened to you <laughs> yeah. up until uh, quarter to four <laughs> is totally and utterly perfect. No one has ever made a right or wrong decision. Everything, no see. one has ever made a right or wrong decision. Nothing could have been any other way mm -hmm. in the dream. But, it's absolutely appropriate as it is. But I felt as if I, as if I could uh, go <coughs> deep, could have gone deeper into the nothingness. Yeah, but you couldn't because no one can, no one ever has. Whatever happened was absolutely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. People say to me, I, I listen to you and I've meditated for 20 years and that's now a total waste of time. Mm -hmm. It isn't, that could, couldn't have been any other way. I love that so much what Nathan Jill said. Um, the I came in trying to claim its own absence. 
Yes. yes. And yeah, yeah that that's the is, same as that's the same. Yeah. If, if this can also just drop away, come yeah. back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anything can happen, yeah. and it and does. <laughs> you have not uh, cancelled the, the, the word invitation, no? Invitation. I haven't cancelled it. No. No, no. <laughs> I don't hear it. Uh, it doesn't come up very much these days. <laughs> <laughs> the dream and uh, all what what happens, what arises, is also you say it very, very uh, many times, an invitation. Mm. For yeah, the, the, the seeker, who the apparent seeker who is looking, is actually looking at oneness. Mm -hmm. So everything that seems to surround the seeker is oneness inviting the seeker that is inviting. oneness to see that all, everything surrounding the seeker is oneness. It's an invitation. Hey, hi, yeah? I'm yeah. here. Yeah, it's knocking at the door. Yeah. yeah, come on, you know, I'm, hello, you're looking for yeah. me, I'm here, yeah. hello. Yeah. This despair is, is knocking at the door to, uh, yeah. to see it. Okay. But in the end, when it's seen, of course, it's realized there's no door to knock on. Uh -huh. But the door you're knocking on is also it. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe the error is to try to understand you. The error is, is thinking that there's anything that can be done, or there's anyone. Yeah, but there's nothing to understand. There's nothing to understand. What, we're, what is being shared here is totally beyond understanding. Understanding is a subtle form of seeking. Understanding is nothing. Understanding is someone who understands. There are people in this room, there are people around, who could write this out in five sentences who have utter clarity about it, an awakening hasn't happened. So uh, utter clarity is simply utter clarity. It has nothing to do with a awakening. You can have someone who is utterly clear, standing next to someone who is utterly confused. An awakening will happen in one or the other, <coughs> utterly regardless. <laughs> Not using any mind to <coughs> No one can. The mind or thinking happens. Well, that's really easy. <coughs> Absolutely, that easy. You can go now. <laughs> I mean, every time I try to understand you, then I make a mistake. I shouldn't try yeah. to understand you. Easy. <coughs> Because it is utterly easy, simple, and directly this. We all, everyone knows that, because they are that. We all know it's this. At the moment you try to understand it, you are yeah. on the wrong track. Yeah. Because then you're trying to understand this. And all of this is this. Children, child, children don't try to understand, they just... But you close to school, children, school. Kindergarten. Kindergarten, yeah. That's when it all, that's when all the children start. That's when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> but that's still one still, There's nothing right or wrong with that, that's what happens. One thing that they like the statement: all dualistic teachings are subtly or grossly misleading because all they, dualistic teachings are a teaching of imprisonment. Well, yes. Despite all claims that hierarchical settings, or for instance, staying in the moment, I am, etc., 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 all. Claims 
flames that they have led to those who did to awakening, even liberation, is, as I have heard you correctly, basically misleading, mis. <coughs> uh, well, they are what they are. But they are confu they are. confusion misleads people into believing that there is something that can be done. Yes. Does that not create with the many, many, many dualistic uh, teachers any kind of type of friendly uproar? Friendly uproar? <laughs> no, I don't know. Here? Or no, but are there protests uh, against the radicality? Yes, absolutely. They are. <laughs> One of the arguments that is so lovely that comes out of this is, well, of course, what you're saying is that people, that there is no responsibility, people have no responsibility to become awakened. But I'm not saying people don't have a responsibility. I'm saying there aren't any people. <laughs> so I... We had some scene here of your last... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> books, are, books are crap. Yeah. Don't, it, it has don't not, buy them. It has yeah. not the right title, huh? Eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an already. that's an American book. Where, oh, yeah. You know, it had to be translated into American, really. And it took a long time to translate into American because the lang Americans like a certain sort of language. Oh. Oh, it's not correct what here, eh? There isn't anything correct in that. <laughs> <laughs> May I had uh, some lines? Yeah, yeah, just yeah? a few. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh. I began to understand what healing the blind means in the Gospels. And I asked very deeply, not just intellectually, but with every fiber, fiber, fiber. Fiber of my being. Of my being. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to have my eyes open. Yes. I was ready to give up everything for just one glimpse of that mystery. Yes. Three days later, three yeah. days later. <laughs> <laughs> by walking across the park, I was no longer doing the walking. So all of that was in the dream. The point oh, yeah. is that before awakening happened, I thought that I was asking to, to be shown the mystery. Because the thing about Jesus healing the blind isn't healing yeah. people who are blind. It's opening their eyes to see that there is nothing to look for. Yeah. It looks like fulfilling a prayer. Yes, it does. Yeah. It's a story. It's, but it's also a uh, description. Of, it's not a prescription. Do it it's a description of a it's story. Only a description, not a prescription. No, there is nothing prescribed here. Right. I understand. He's, he's somebody there. Can you? But well, there is this recognition. Is this recognition part of the dream? Uh, no, the recognition arises in timelessness. There is only, no, there is no time. What arises and seems to happen is, dream, is a dream. This is a dream called things happening in time. Recognition is that there is, or happens in no time, or apparently happens in no time. We're into deep mystery then, here, I'm afraid. But recognition, seeing oneness, is, is, is timeless and happens to no one. Or you could put it the other way around, there's a story of somebody walking across a park, which is a story in what seems to be a time sequence. And then suddenly the story and time end, there is no one, there's this. So when there is this recognition right now, sorry, when there is this recognition right now, is that part of the dream? There isn't a now, but the recognition is uh, happens to no one. It simply is the seeing of oneness. 
And then thereafter, let's say, without going into the awakening thing, what is seen is the playing out of a dream. Which has no meaning. And it's, I think it's coffee time, isn't it? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I have to have a lot of coffee. You know. <laughs> I don't care about you, but I want some coffee. <laughs>
what, what to do with that urge wanting to do something. <laughs> There is nothing that can, there is no one that can do anything, but, but some, what can happen is seeing that there is an urge. And that's it. That's it. The urge is this, seeing this is this, knowing this is the beginning of the end. The one that knows you're sitting there looking at me, is the, is the one, is nothing, knowing you're looking at me. And that, that can, that can, well it doesn't change, but what can happen in knowing that you think you are looking at me, or knowing that that's, that thing there is looking at me, there can just be looking that can arise out. When uh, we talked before, <clears throat> before the coffee break, and just that sentence, oneness is seeking oneness. There was uh, sadness coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There can be a sadness about, um, in a sense. Uh, whilst there's still a person, there can be a sadness about a sense of something lost or mislaid. Or, and there can also be a sense of the whole world mislaying that. A sense of sadness about the world not seeing that all there is is one. With. It's still in the story, but it's, it happens. <laughs> about the part of unconditional love. You talked before about it. So, first some recognition, some sadness with, you told about the desert, and then a certain kind of well, acceptance, and then unconditional love. Well, the nature of oneness is stillness, silence, impersonality, in, and um, the impersonal and unconditional, you could say those are values because they're all just words. And compassion, which is simply the destroyer of illusion. So you could say the nature, when, when there is no one, it is seen, This the mind starts getting very tricky about this, it is seen that everything that's happening is the expression of unconditional love. Unconditional love. It's a way of trying to describe something that's then not describable. So that unconditional love is all embracing. Of course that unconditional love is also everything. <laughs> so naturally nothing is denied. There is nothing right or wrong, there is only what is, which is the appearance out of nothing of everything. Um, I experience resistance. And the resistance is unconditional love arising as resistance. Excuse me? Uh, un uh, resistance is unconditional love, oneness, arising as resistance. It's the resistance is it, not when there is no resistance, there it will be. Resistance is it, is aliveness, yeah. is oneness. Thank you. Okay.
Yes. Uh, there's still the hope for blissfulness. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> blissfulness is one one of the well is a quality that people think arises <clears throat> with with um, liberation. It does sometimes. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or everything arises in liberation for but but for no one. Um, you have to be a bit careful with this, but the joy of liberation is nothing to do with blissfulness, anger, or anything that arises. It is to do with the utter boundlessness of being this. So it isn't because of anything. It is in spite of everything. It is prior, it's, it is, it is simply the joy of being, whatever is. And it doesn't matter what's going on out there that apparently is, it's the joy of being. And bliss is one of the things that can arise and then pass away again. So it's constant that this is you know, this guy who was talking about peace, the state of peace. It, it, uh, uh, liberation is not a state, it is, it is that which is constant. It, that's all there is, there is only liberation. There is only liberation, there is only oneness. So he... So, you are not only the most boring, but also the most disappointing. Yes. Oh no, absolutely. That's a compliment. That's good. <coughs> this is about disappointment. The mind, more and more the, the, the mind comes here, the more disappointed the mind becomes. It tries to destroy this, or it tries to devalue it, or it tries to avoid it. And it goes on and on coming and trying to do that, and in the end it sort of says, oh, fuck this, I'll get it. <laughs> and, oh. What's this? Um, I'm just wondering how you, because you do have a partner, don't you? I do have a... <coughs> a romantic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how do you experience that? Oh, um, <laughs> do you want the details? Or yeah. the details? <laughs> I don't experience it, it happens. It just happens. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> No, in a sense, the dreamer can't know that because the dreamer thinks in the same way as with the wall that the, that the other person is another person. So what you then have is what's called a relationship. But in reality, there is no such thing because there is no one else. Then, then there is no object out there to which you relate. But does it feel like um, sharing of unconditional love? Just oneness? Well, no, no, those are words. It's, it's indescribable. The earlier you say it's like sharing unconditional love, then the mind can go bad with that. Yeah. Or make up all sorts of funny stories. I can't, it's indescribable, just as everything else is. But still, it comes up that in practical life you are sharing a life with a person. Um, that's how it appears to be. And there, there, I mean, the other part of this is that there are two, you could say in appearance only, there are two body-mind mechanisms that are conditioned. And so games still go on. You know, like, you know about games? <laughs> Those sort of things can go, but they've diminished to such a degree that they then don't have any significance anymore because everything is seen as a game anyway. There's no longer that sort of, um, well, there's no longer any importance to anything that goes on. So there's no meaning making? There's no? Meaning making or 
holding on to anything. I didn't get that. There's no meaning. Meaning, I don't. So this is it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>